this is Sharbria Shine, and welcome back to Max Out Girl. Today we have a special guest, Veranda Crawford. Hi, Veranda. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Now, I had to bring this podcast because you are Max out in life, girl. I mean, you are doing so many great things, and I just want you to share with the audience today all the great things you're doing and how you're juggling it all because you are moving, like you are doing a lot. So first of all, let's just go down, start from the beginning. I first just want to say that you are the youngest government official in the state of South Carolina. Girl, you maxing it. <laughs> like, well, thank you. <laughs> yes. So you're the city councilwoman of, is it Chesney, South Carolina? Yes. It is. Oh my God. South Carolina. Mm -hmm. For the past eight years, correct? Nine. I'm on my oh, ninth year wow. now. Wow. Nine wow. years. Yeah. So, how did it start? Like, let's talk about when you're growing up. Like, did you say, I am going to be a councilwoman? I want to make a difference. I want to make a change. Or kind of did you stumble upon it? Like, how did that come about? Well, um, I would say it was all my father and my family influence. Okay. Um, ever since I was a kid, I always remembered. Um, meeting with my father and my uh, and my mother they were they're still very adamant about being a part of their community and being a part of a solution just not talking about the problem so yeah um my dad served on city council when I was in high school and I knew that I wanted to be a part of government um okay. because when government is done correctly it's great and it benefit the people. Um, mm -hmm. So when all my other friends in high school on a Monday night, they might be at home relaxing. I was at a city council meeting or I was doing some kind of community service project. Wow. Um, and so I knew at a very young age that I wanted to be a part of some, some kind of government body. I was student body president of my high school. And then I first election as a senior in high school. Um, I turned 18 on election day and wow. uh, yeah, and I lost my <laughs> first, I lost my first election as an 18 year old senior in high school by five votes. And okay. then I ran again as a sophomore in college at the age of 20. Mm -hmm. um, and I won in a runoff election by one vote. Wow. And yeah. And I've been <laughs> elected ever since then. Um, I ran for mayor twice, lost um, by a slim margin, like 10 to 12 votes because city of Chesney is a very small town. Um, but yes, my parents really instilled in me that part of the solution and not part of the problem. So. Wow. I love that. So let's talk about you know, a couple of things. First of all, as a woman, sometimes we may feel like, you know, we don't have a voice or we're too young or we're not educated enough or we, you know, we don't have enough influence. How mm -hmm. did you kind of kill that negative self-talk or did you not struggle with any of those things? Oh, I struggled. I struggled, currently struggle and probably will still struggle with that. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. I, at the beginning, it was she is so young. She is, it was age. Um, yes. She's 20. Was in our city. Like I remember when I first got elected, the first year or two was the hardest ever. Um, people was slandering me on social media. Um, I will have like all these threats and all just like a lot of people was not used to change and seeing um, a young African-American sitting on council. Yeah. So the city of Chesney is probably like 80-20. Um, okay. And um, I was serving with another African-American. Um, so, but our age demographic, we are retirement community. So it's like me being in 20s and then the next youngest person was in their 70s. Oh, wow. Harry is the oldest. So the funny thing is the city of Chesney has the youngest elected official in the state and the oldest elected mayor oh. in the state. <laughs> <laughs> so think about these two polar opposites. Yeah, we are yeah. the youngest in the state and the oldest in the state and we sit right beside each other. Wow. Um, and uh, I mean over the last 90 years um, I I have I struggle with self-doubt and I, I struggle with like am I smart enough and am I valued enough but I think at the end of the day that I realized that the only person that can judge me is myself. Yeah. And if I feel like I am doing the best I can, um, then that's the best I can do that day. And yeah. um, 
tell and I tell one thing I have to tell myself that like you know you got to be yourself your own self cheerleader and yeah. like you got like yeah you can do this it's okay yeah. drop mm-hmm. those tears yeah keep yeah. going um because you because I am worthy and everyone is worthy it's just that we if we don't believe in ourselves it's hard for other people to believe in us Oh my God, that's so great. I'm so glad you said that because <laughs> some women could look at certain women and say, oh my God, she doesn't struggle with self-doubt, especially when they look at certain accomplishments, especially how you have, you know, reached that plateau of being the youngest government official, you know, in South Carolina. That's amazing. And some women may look at you and say, oh my God, of course she's maxing out life and she because she doesn't deal with self-doubt or insecurities or not thinking she's good enough. And I love that you admit that because we all deal with that at some level. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. I love that you just admitted that, but you also persevered. You didn't let it stop you. You mm-hmm. look at yourself probably in the mirror and say, I am worthy. I am good enough. And you persevered through it. And so let's talk about, you said you, um, you didn't make it the election the first time you weren't elected. How did that failure? Some people might say, Oh, did, did she give into the failure? I always say it's not, it's failure is falling forward or learning but how did that how did you take that to keep pushing instead of giving up because I know that it could be so easy especially being that young or even at any age to say you know what who am I kidding I am too young or I am Mm -hmm. you know African-American woman or you know you know all these people there they don't believe in me I can't make a difference how did you know you continue to push until you persevered well I always feel like failure is God preparing you for your success okay um, a lot of people look at a failure well I didn't make it because I it wasn't my time or you know I don't need to try it again I think that I would not be here today serving nine years if I didn't lose those two elections I think I go through those hardships because the Lord was preparing me for the harder struggle was going to be once I got elected. And I really think that he was conditioning for me. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you running a marathon. You're not just going to jump off the couch and go run a marathon. No, you have to train. You have to condition your body for that, that marathon of life. And I think failures are those those times that you go to the gym and you're practicing and you're preparing for that marathon and that race. And yeah. so that's one thing that I, I, I really looked at my failures as like, okay, if I can survive a public defeat, like you, everybody in town, all these people, they know that you failed yeah. and you're like, you got your heart, your heart was broken and all this stuff. You, if I could pick myself up, try again anytime that I'm told no if I'm voting on an ordinance or a a budget for a lot I'm budgeted out and disagree with I'm used to that no I'm used to that failure so now I can push push through that feeling yeah that's amazing and you know what you hear that lady? She persevered because you're saying that you, you failed publicly, you know, you could have given in to the pressure of it or the embarrassment of it or woe is me, or, you know, I'm so humiliated. I don't want to ever try again. And you say you were mm-hmm. under a microscope. People were trying to, you know, talk about you and, you oh, know, yeah. and like really destroy your character and your oh, name, yeah. but you pushed through it. And I feel like that's something we all have to know, like true success. It's not that you just get it the first time. No, you keep trying until you reach your goal. And I love how you just said, you know what? I'm going to try again. And now look at you. <laughs> no, <what that? laughs> now look at you. You know, you're such an inspiration because, you know, a lot of times people can give up. And I've been like that before. Like, oh, my God, I failed. This is so humiliating. Why should I try again? Right. And then when you listen to stories of successful people, they show you that failure is actually very common. And like Mm -hmm. you said, it is healthy because it's preparing you. So I love that. Oh, my God. Thank you for sharing that point. Yeah. So so let's fast forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you're an elected official. Mm -hmm. And then you also have another full time job, correct, as a director of marketing? Yes. Mm-hmm. And what is and the name of that organization is? So I, I'm the director of marketing and store manager for the Boy Scouts of America, Palmetto Council. Mm-hmm. So, yes. And I, yeah, I do a lot of that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. And that focuses on like career mentorship and personal yes. development for high school students. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. But guys, that's not it. Ladies, when I tell you she's maxing out, not only <laughs> is she an elected official and a director of marketing for Paletto Boys Scouts, but she also 
is the owner of Designs by Veronica Clothing Boutiques, and she specializes in custom pageant attire and ready-to-wear clothing. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, I love fashion, so I really wanted to talk, you know, get a little bit more information about this because I love the fact that not only are you doing other amazing things, but you have a passion for this. And kind of explain, how did you even get into this entrepreneurship role? <laughs> wow. Um, so once again, um, it from my um my family my my father um is an entrepreneur he owned a contracting business all his life so I was always around and my grandparents both were entrepreneurs so I was always around business owners okay and so being an elected official my main platform was economic development like there's a lot of like a lot of small towns across America the downtown there's empty storefronts they're not a lot of growth because people are fearful of starting a business in town um and just just like any other small town across america had that same problem we had a lot of boarded up downtown buildings and then people were afraid to start a business so really mm-hmm. i started my i sat down one day and this from competing in pageants two folds to this competing in pageants it's very expensive. I, mm-hmm. My family is, it, we couldn't afford it. I mean, I, okay. I had a, I had a, you know, fundraise. I had to shop off the rack. I, oh, so I, you were in pageants. You yes, were in I was. Okay. Yes. I, yeah. So I was in pageants. I competed for Miss South Carolina America twice. So I did Miss South Carolina USA. I did. Um, so I did other, I, I competed in pageants for okay. a while. And I realized that um, the girls that can't, uh, financially afford to have the best of the best you can see them struggle a little bit more and I did yeah. not want someone to feel like they cannot afford something custom something designed just because they're not financially um stable or at that point that they can afford a custom five or six thousand dollar dress which nobody can right yeah so I wanted to be able to give and to make every woman, no matter what their financial status is, to make them feel special. So when I, um, about three years into, once I graduated my undergrad and started my master program, I was like, I'm going to get my grad degree for my city of Chesney because I want to be able to market it. I want to be able to push my city to reach its best potential. And I, mm-hmm. And I was sitting there one day, I was like, if I'm out here trying to convince people to start a business, but I haven't, how does that make me look? I feel like that made me look like a hypocrite. I'm a very type of person. I'm not going to make somebody else do it unless I do it first. Because yeah. I want to be able to say, you know, it is hard or it is easy. And this is the struggles that you go So I can be sympathetic. So I can, yeah. um, so we can be on the same level. So I started my business four years ago. Okay. Um, downtown Chesney, a little small, little, I mean, it's a tiny little storefront. And I started off at the beginning, um, selling ready to wear. And then I started doing custom attire. And that's all I do now is custom attire, mm-hmm. which is amazing. Within four years, we had 15 new businesses start. Wow. That's amazing. In downtown um, Chesney and so you're kind of like the forerunner you encourage yeah people. because yeah like a lot of people I think a lot of people see like okay if that person can do it I can do it yes and somebody they just need somebody to go test the waters out first and yeah. I don't mind being a guinea pig I don't mind mm-hmm. um but <laughs> I really thought that it's very important for me being on city council if I say that my platform is economic development how am I living my platform every that's and, awesome that's such that's a great point <laughs> yeah like and, and I believe that that's one thing we can talk about politics but that's another day but I believe <laughs> that as a uh, representative of uh, of a community that been elected that you have to live out your platform and I say that I'm for economic development if I'm not actively every day trying to live out my passion and so um and like my dad always told me be part of the solution not part of the problem so if I want the solution of people to open up a business go open up a business yeah so um 
and I've been designing uh, evening gown dresses for the last four years. And it's amazing wow. because I did not go to school to be a designer. I am a PR major with a uh, MBA in marketing. Mm-hmm. And I just like, I can draw a little bit. I just found people that are have a God-given talent and we have to make a great little team. And people believe in me. And sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, they believe in me. This, woo, okay, yeah, let's go. <laughs> but it's amazing when God opened up a door that and he he allow you to step through it comfortably when he had prepared it for you. Yeah, I love that. You know, thanks for making that point, because I think that sometimes what we do is we have a passion for something, but we don't have all the gifts or the talents or the ability right. or the resources mm-hmm. to see it come through. So we give up on our dream. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, our God given dream that that's from God. That's a passion that we're meant to do. But because we don't see all the pieces come together, we mm-hmm. don't have the entire plan we want to give up. And I love that you said I'm not even a designer. <laughs> <laughs> but no. you design custom gowns and that's amazing <laughs> yeah. because you're intelligent enough to know you don't have to have all the gifts and talents just find people that do <laughs> right vision, exactly. exactly you know so yeah. find talented gifted people and you don't have to feel insecure that they may know something you don't that's part of a team mm-hmm. you know and I, and I love that so ladies don't give up on your dream or your passion just because you don't have all the skills or you don't have all the resources go after that thing find people that have the resources find people that have the skills put together a bomb team people that have your back that believe in you and then you're gonna start maxing it out because Rhonda she over here doing her thing you don't drop some nuggets <laughs> girl <laughs> you can drop some nuggets and I love the fact that you said like you want to live your platform out you don't have a platform just for status you have one mm. for service so you mm. want to make sure that you're living it out you're being an example for those who are following you and I love that because I feel like in today's society so many people just want a platform to look good and right. like you said it's more hypocritical because they're not living it out they're just wanting to look good and shiny oh I have right. an office or I have a store or I have this platform but you're like no I want to be a solution and I want to be a part of that change. And I have a voice who, no matter where I'm at, no matter who I am, no matter where I live, I can make a difference and you are doing it and you're inspiring other people and encouraging other people to do it. And I love it. So let's talk a little bit more about the design. So you said you do mostly, um, you said pageant wear now attire. Pageant wear and wedding attire. Oh, wow. Yes, Mm -hmm. wedding as well. So right now you're mostly designing dresses, custom dresses for boutiques and weddings. So how does the process work? Does someone come in your store and kind of share their ideas of their their perfect or your, you know, their, you know, their dream of what they want their dress to look like? How does that go? All right. So um, normally my consultations start with like women bringing in pictures of their could be a wedding dress a pageant dress um is normally like oh I like the top of this dress or I like these sleeves I like the bottom of this I like this color so what we do we take all those pictures and I sketch out I do a flat sketch which is thoughts together for them to see like okay yeah this is exactly what I like And then one of my members on my team is an illustrator and he is an amazing, amazing illustrator. So then we illustrate the dress to, that was very Southern dress. Uh, (laughs) We illustrate the dress. That's okay, girl. You're from the South. (laughs) I know. It's the South. God. (laughs) We illustrate the uh, dress to like the full details. So people can see the embellishments, the lace, everything. And then we also, because my illustrator is such an amazing person, make the person look like them. So we kind of wow. like make sure that like it's the same size. We kind of the same facial features down to kind of the same skin tone. So a person can really see that like envision themselves in that dress. So then after that, um, once the person like, okay, that's it. And then that's when we start the process and um, ordering fabric and doing all this stuff. So I get to a science where because my team is amazing like yeah. I don't the funny thing is people always ask me like oh do you sew uh no can I sew <laughs> yes but that's not my god-given talent my god-given yeah. talent is um being a project manager that's basically what I am I'm just I make sure that the cloth is delivered on time that the one seamstress that is doing 
their her job is everything is like clockwork. So everybody know what their job is until it moves on to the next person. So now I got it down to a science where I can do a custom dress in six weeks to the point that a person can come in and it fit them perfectly and they can walk out. Wow. Wow. And six yeah. weeks. You six to eight weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I wish I would have known you when I got married. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I'm five months into this thing and I would have loved to come in there and just oh. get it all, <laughs> get it all awesome. done. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. That's so amazing. So, well, thank mm-hmm. you for sharing, man. You are really maxing out at life. So how do you juggle it all? Because as we say, you are like, doing everything you're an official you have you're a director of marketing full-time and then you're director of public relations for miss u.s international pageant Mm -hmm. then you're the owner of your own boutique and designer how do you manage it all and then i also do consulting on the side Uh, so oh oh, wow i'm I'm, I'm a consulting oh oh, wow yes with vc consulting Um, okay how do i juggle it all um Mm -hmm. i don't (laughs) <laughs> okay and, okay. I, and I, i'm gonna be honest and then i think a mm-hmm. lot of people want to always oh you're doing so much how do you juggle it well what i tell people there and like i also do other things like i'm also a landlord i have a rental property and now i'm the maintenance person for the land for my rental property so wow. the way that i tell people is i have certain days for certain things okay and and um because as women we are naturally made to juggle multiple things. We are mothers, we are wives, yes, we are sisters. Yes. We we are super women. <laughs> we're super women. We are naturally born to do this. So yeah. when you just when you stop freaking out and looking at the whole thing of like, oh my God, I'm doing all this stuff. Yeah. But I compartmentalize a lot. So whenever I am working on one project or with a dress client, that's after I do what I need to do for that day for that dress client, it might be 10 to 15 minutes or an hour. That's all that, pro- that's all that business is getting okay. is that hour. And whenever I tell people, if you are juggling multiple things, like you got multiple businesses, you want a full time, you have a personal life, you're trying to do all of this stuff, you be able to one, make sure yourself is part of that juggle because a lot yes. of times we, we have all these balls in the air to get the yeah. hands that got the balls floating. Yeah, self-care. <laughs> it's yes. self-care. Mm-hmm. So my self-care is like the biggest ball that I juggle. Like I would tell somebody in a heartbeat, like, no. Yeah. Um, and then this is one motto, and I know this might sound crazy, but I live my life off of this motto. It's worth more than your money. Yes. And then, so I realized, and I had to really like teach myself that, um, that as a small business owner that wants your business to grow, 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 but you want sustainable growth. You want to be able to control your balls that you're juggling because if one decided to get out of hand, you end up dropping everything else. So -hmm. you got to be able to focus and be able to compartmentalize like, if I have this one business, I want to make sure I devote one hour or two hours a day for this business. Or if that one business is on Tuesday or whatever it is, make sure you did that you designate a, a definite time for that. So when you do juggle, I'm not juggling. Like a lot of people think like, oh, my God, you're so busy. I'm like. Yeah, uh, y'all really think so? Because I just binge watched you drinking a whole bottle of wine last weekend. <laughs> like, I'm not like y'all. Think I'm You're not busy? stressing. I'm not yeah. stressed. But when yeah. you're juggling, it's like you stress because you're trying to get all these balls and keep them in the air. The only thing I'm doing is playing baseball and I'm hitting home runs. Yeah, and yeah. so you know what? It's that whole different mentality that like, do I have some long days? Yes. Because I choose to have those long days. I yeah. tell myself that I need to complete X, Y, and Z for these clients. And then I move on. But then at the end of the day, I know that if I don't take care of Veranda, and if Veranda is not relaxed and Veranda is not stressed, something that should take me 30, 30 minutes to an hour to complete would now take me four hours. So now I'm stressed about why am I sitting here at my computer and my mind is just spinning, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, that's one that one. And when people say, oh, you're juggling a lot. I said, no, really, I'm not. 
juggling. I don't juggle. I just do. Like, there's certain days that I do certain things. And if something happens to come up, I make time. But I'm not going to stress about it. I tell people, no, you might have to wait. And yeah. a lot of people are scared to say that. It's yeah. Telling people that they're afraid that they're not, we won't hear another yes. That's awesome. So So you hear that, ladies? Do not be afraid to say no. (laughs) That's awesome. And I love how you said certain days for certain things. I think that we can make our life so much more stressful because we're like, I'm trying to work on this. No, now the next hour, I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do, I got to finish. And we get so distracted, but that's such great advice you gave. Like make a time for it. When that time is done, you're done. Even if you didn't finish it, you're done and move on to that next task. So I love it. Thank you so much, Rhonda. This has been an amazing talk. And guys, I hope you all today have been encouraged, inspired, and we elevated your thinking. And always remember to max out, girl. So where can they find you, Rhonda? Well, you can find me on social media. You can find my personal page at Rhonda08. Or you can find my um, design page at designs underscore by Veranda. Or you can find my consulting page at VC Consulting LC on Instagram. Yeah. Come and be my friend. I love friends. Yes. (laughs) You guys hear that? Make sure you check her out. Follow her. Definitely check out her business pages. They are dope. I love her designs. You want to make sure you check out her business consulting. She's amazing. She's so talented. You definitely want to tune into what she's doing right now. And you guys know you can find me on all social media at Sharbria Shine. Check out Sharbria.com for resources, for books, for blogs, for all of those great things. And again, remember to max out, girl. This is Sharbria Shine, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>